Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. Fourteen ninety WGCH. This is Carrie Lutch. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. If you're wondering where gold, where silver are heading, right now it looks like they're heading higher. My next guest, Nick Santiago of InTheMoneyStocks.com, has got some answers for you. Nick, welcome back to the Financial Survival Network. Uh, it's great to be back, Carrie. Thank you. And it's good to have you. We're watching quite a run-up in gold and the gold stocks, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, well, physical metal is really uh, is 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 really uh, front and center today. Had a there was a major move. Uh, you got to respect that move. It looks like gold wants higher prices in the near term. Today great we're today. today we're talking about February twenty second, two thousand twelve. That's correct. How much is it up the past week, Nick? Well. We've had just in the past two days, in the past two trading sessions, um, you know, gold yesterday was up, I think, 32, and today you have another uh, monster move higher, uh, trading up another 20. So, I mean, just in two days, you're up over 50 points. Amazing. Over $50. Amazing. And it was up 10 on, uh, on the aborted uh, trading day on Monday. That's correct. It was President's Day. So we're up yeah. 60 bucks for the week. And... That's basically about uh, 4%, which isn't bad. You know, the 30-day change in gold, it's $101 an ounce, and we're talking about 6%. And one year, meaning 365 days, we're looking at $378 and 27%. I mean, where else are you getting those kind of returns, huh? Well, the, the best part about it is, um, I've been a gold bug for a while, but the best part about it is that you know, if God forbid anything ever happens to the fiat currencies of the world, you have you have a real asset in your hand, in your hand, a tangible asset, and that's I, I don't think there's really anything better at this point in, in time. Makes all the difference. And for people who don't want to hold the physical for whatever reason, there's storage concerns, there's tax concerns, there's a lot of things that make people hesitant. And I say, forget about why you don't want to and just do it. But what do you think are some good vehicles to hold gold and silver? And we're not well, talking the ETFs, uh, SLV and GLD, right? No, no. I would. I like the central fund out of Canada. Uh, CEF is the ticker symbol on the New York Stock Exchange, and I'm sure they have uh, other simple symbols on the Toronto Exchange as well. But uh, that is uh, a place where I feel very comfortable with, and I've I've been a, a long-term holder of, uh, in that position. And for the sake of disclosure, before I even got into doing a show, I've owned CEF and I've only added to my position over the years. And honestly, it makes no difference if people buy it or not. That's not what affects the price of CEF. It's simply the underlying gold and silver prices. Uh, I think it was almost 50-50, half in gold, half in silver, right? Yes, that's correct. And then we also have the Silver Bullion Trust. And what I like about these Canadian guys is, unlike uh, GLD and SLV, they actually have uh, a major accounting firm audit their vaults twice a year. Isn't that right? That's correct. That's correct. It's a, it's a very, very cleanly run uh, business. Yeah, so it makes a big, big difference when you're talking about uh, what uh, what what's, what's actually there. there what are they actually holding and uh <laughs> it's comforting to be honest yeah definitely and what about the mining stocks they're uh, they look like they're starting to to participate well, in the, the metal rally huh well the, the mining stocks uh had a nice little move today overall though i don't expect all that much in the mining stocks right now i i think that we're coming up into some near-term resistance points that are going to be uh, crucial to the mining stocks. I think the mining stocks are lagging the metal. Um, also, at this stage, I, I also believe that the central bank bankers around the world are, are probably looking at gold and saying, hey, uh, gold is telling the world that there's inflation out there. And um, they're going to probably you know, pull, pull off the gas pedal a little bit on this, uh, on this easing that they've been doing. And, uh, you know, all these central bankers are now working together, whether it's the People's Bank of China, 
Federal Reserve, the uh, European Central Bank, the Bank of England, which has just done more quantitative easing. So, uh, again, they're going to look at the price of gold today, and they're going to say, oh, boy, we gotta, we got to do something here. So, you know, I don't want anybody, I think you'll get, you'll get a chance to get back in gold again, especially in the latter part of this year. Yeah, but I, you know, what's, what's the next resistance level? Like you said, 1769 was December, 1766 was February's high. There's no yeah, I'm resistance. At, if you're looking at spot, uh, if you're looking at gold futures, I'm thinking around 1810. I think so, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think that could get there in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, even where we are right now, I mean, it's not even that far away. We're at 1778. So, you know, what's to get up another, uh, you know, 30, 40 points? It could do that in a heartbeat, single yeah. day. Yeah, and, and that's it'll blow through that. That's a really minor resistance point. We're really looking at the next one. I think 1880 is a little more significant. And then we get, obviously, to the mother of all resistance points, which is 1922, which is the former high. And uh, that's what we need to keep our eyes open for. Although, you're right, there could be a takedown. Well, and you know, the way I like to explain it to people when I speak to them is gold, the central banker's worst nightmare. Even though it's synonymous and it, it goes up with the market and goes down with the market when, when we have big deflationary trends, um, the central bankers know that since they don't print M3 money supply anymore, this is a way that, they're, that the, the uh, public or the educated investor knows that there's uh, some funny business going on or there's some uh, devaluing of the currency going on. And, and gold is really the central banker's worst nightmare. Uh, you don't think they would do something like that, do you, Nick? Uh, probably not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, come on. It's the government. They're here to help you. Right? <laughs> we all know it's their worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the, uh, as uh, Peter Schiff is fond of saying, it's the canary in the, in the coal mine, and the coal miners are dying because they've uh, doped up the canary to the point where he's not telling them that there's gas in the mine, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the truth. <laughs> so, so you're Joe Sixpack. You're an average investor. You got a little bit of physical. You feel like you have enough because holding any more presents logistical problems without going into it. So what do you do, Nick? I mean, how do you build a little bit of wealth here, take advantage of a trend that you and I both believe has a lot longer to run? What do you do? safely and i'm saying that you know you could go buy cef or svrzf and fine and obviously i can't tell anyone to buy stocks you can't you know we're not uh, at least i'm not a financial advisor although uh, my wife seems to think i am but uh, i think she's the better advisor honestly but what do you do well i think that you, you the best thing to do is just to buy some physical metal uh, you know, have some on hand. God forbid anything ever happens. It's it's well worth having. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, you know, has that ability. Just buy some physical, you know, gold or silver. Um, both, you know, th throughout the past 10 years have outperformed everything. Um, these kind of markets, bull markets, don't end that quickly. They usually will end with some type of blow off top. And as long as, you know, the, the dollar becomes, you know, continues to get devalued over the years, uh, you know, What's, what's to say these to where these things can trade? I mean, they can just continue to climb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think uh, a core metal holding in every investor's portfolio at this point, it isn't a real leap of uh, science or a real leap of faith to know that that's probably a good thing. And these prices are a lot higher than they were 10 years ago, obviously, actually 11 years ago when the bull market started. But they haven't gone anywhere near parabolic as they did in the uh, 70s in that rally that ended uh, in the early 80s. So there could be a lot of mileage left, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so as far as uh, types of holdings, basically coins, probably a good thing, right? Not to get into bars. Yeah, you could hold coins, you could hold physical bullion i prefer bullion as i don't prefer to have you know somebody's face on my on my metal but uh <laughs> it, the choice is up to the individual well sometimes they're pretty faces there nick you know 
Yeah, no, they have some pretty eagles on there, and there's some nice, you know, Indian heads and mm-hmm. some pictures of some famous people, <laughs> but uh, nothing like that, uh, like that bar. <laughs> well, I'm holding in my hand right now, and I'm going to put it up with our interview, a 2011 Silver Eagle, and it is a beautiful coin. It really is. I it have is. To say. It is. In fact, I have a few myself, right on my desk, right here, and. Um, I have Elizabeth II. Mm-hmm. I have uh, another one right here, which is very, very nice. Elizabeth looks pretty there. She's wearing a nice dress. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, but the point is, regardless what form, just get it. Get it. Get it. You know, finally, I told you, my best friend finally bought some. Jeff, you know, it took me four years and him missing the move but you know honestly the move didn't matter because at least he's got it now and he doesn't know what a favor i've done for him and yeah. he's not going to know he for really a did. while you did him a favor and, and the best thing is get it forget it but at least you have it that's yeah. what i always tell people and family members that you just never know what can happen out there we're in a you know a world where there's a lot of disarray out there besides of you know regardless of what the media will tell you and it's It just makes you sleep better at night, and I know I do. Amen to that, brother. I mean, I really do. One of the things I like best about your site is that you have a pretty sizable section devoted to education, and that's kind of unusual on your type of site. How did you wind up putting that up there? Well, one thing we did with our site as far as education goes is um, our inspiration to get into this business was me simply interviewing for hedge funds a few years ago and I was offered menial positions and uh, I said you know what I'm gonna my partner and myself got together and we said let's let's teach the public how to do this let's forewarn them what's about to happen and we were able to call the 2007 stock market top to the day and ever since there uh, there's been more and more demand for education Uh, traders have come to us and, and simply demanded hey can you teach me this can you show me this and and we've gotten more and more into education every year. But when we first started, we were just basically giving away the fish, and now we're teaching people how to fish. So it, it's really come full circle, and uh, we're very proud of it. Uh, it's a great thing. Anyway, Nick, uh, we got to get going now, but uh, we appreciate your coming on, and we'll have you on in the future. Just tell us where to find you, and if you take any questions, Emails sure. Come on right. over to InTheMoneyStocks.com. If you have any questions, please email our supported In The Money Stocks, and we'll be happy to answer each and every one of you. Okay, excellent, Nick. Hey, we'll talk to you again soon, and have a prosperous uh, week ahead there. Thank you very much, Kerry. You do the same. Thanks.